What's up YouTube, welcome back to the channel. Thank you again for tuning in and welcome to another video. I have been going back and forth, back and forth on doing this mod because I decided to do something I thought I would never do and that is go for the black line or the smoked version. Um, it's pretty popular that most people go with the red or like the dark red, but I never have been a fan in the past of black taillights. I just, it, it's never been my style. Um, but I've been talking to a couple people and one of my buddies, uh, he knows who he is, he was like, I think you can pull it off. And I was like, really? And he goes, you know, you got such an aggressive back end, which I do, you know, I've, I go pretty subtle on the front end, but he's like, you got the gloss black carbon fiber rondelles, you've got the black badges, um, the, the reflector delete that's gloss black, the aggressive Vorsteiner GTSV uh, style diffuser, the, the black exhaust tip, he's like, I think there's enough black in there where it will complement it. And I kind of was like, all right. And so I pulled the trigger. I pulled the trigger and, but then I got them and then I still questioned myself. So enough is enough. I'm putting them on today. Um, I'm gonna do a step-by-step -step tutorial. However, I wanna do something different that I haven't seen in other videos or not too many of them is you never get the appreciation for what it looks like when you're driving because you are driving the car. So I want to do a before and after of what it looks like, not only stationary, but also when you're moving. So I thought that would be pretty cool. Enough is enough. Let's get the unboxing going and see what these things look like. See if I'm, see if I'm gonna like it. I kind of like the, uh, the packing tape there, M-Power. Kind of cool. I am excited to see what these look like in person. There hasn't been, and that was the other thing too, there hasn't been, a, there's been people with this black line, but I haven't seen very many on a mineral white. So that's one of the reasons I was like, well, I got a white car and I got some black accents in the back. Maybe this will work. Maybe this will work. They are black. <laughs> All right. So here is the smaller. It's black. <laughs> we'll see. We will see. And last but not least, the other small side. So there you go. Um, they look like they're in good condition. They were packaged well. So let's get to it and uh, see what tools we needed to get this job done. All right, going over everything that we need for today's install, we're gonna need a Phillips screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver uh, for the 2016 F80 M3. I believe it's a T10. If it's a F30, it might be something a little bigger, maybe a T20 or T25, but for 2016, it's a T10, an eight millimeter, 10 millimeter socket, uh, maybe some um, pliers or something like that if you have trouble uh, reaching one of the uh, retaining clips, some dip ties, and then a good quality pair of snips. Don't use scissors, you want a good quality. This is one of my favorite pair. Actually, I'll leave a link in the description below, but that's it for today's install. Let's get going. All right, guys, so to get the old taillights out, um, these uh, plastic panels on the arms and this uh, paneling has to come off in the trunk. Most of this is just gonna come off with uh, two tools, a uh, Phillips uh, for these two, and then I believe this is a T10 uh, Torx here, yeah. Uh, mine is specifically a 2016 F80 M3, depending on the model year, or if it's an F30, that might vary just a little bit. But uh, that's what we're gonna do first, and then we're also gonna have to release this e, uh, emergency trunk release as well. And just pulls out like that. Now I'm gonna use my Phillips to get out these larger two. All right, the two Phillips are out. So now we need to do the trunk release. Um, to get that down, uh, it's almost like a little keyhole. You will see that you just kind of slide this towards you like that, that'll come down. And then we need to take this cable out and we're gonna just do that by pushing in. A little difficult to do with one hand and out like that. So now that all the bolts are off and we got rid of the emergency release, it's time to take these arms off. You should just be able to squeeze these together. Uh, if you're having a difficult time, feel free to use a flathead and just kind of wedge it in between. And there's just two clips. There we go. Pull this, rock this out from the corners. It should come down. And then just take these two off the top of the hooks. Cable has gone through for the emergency 
trunk release. And then just kind of feed them through the uh, little cutout slits here. And then we can remove this and put this uh, out of the way in a safe spot. Now that we are finally ready to get to the tail light, uh, like I said, uh, it can vary just a little bit, but mine is a 2016, as I said before. Uh, we need to take this little harness out and then this eight millimeter, and that should be good enough for us to get this portion of the tail light out. So to get this out, there's just a little clip that you're just going to kind of pull back, and I'm gonna slide down. So that comes out like that. And then this bolt here, which is kind of hidden from view, is an eight millimeter. So get eight millimeter socket and just take this off. Whoop! Something came off and there she is. Old tail light. One thing I would recommend real quick before we put in the tail light, you can see this gunk and build up around the trim from the previous tail light. What we want to do is just get a rag, get some cleaner, get that off, make sure the other one gets a nice flush fit real quick. So we're gonna do pretty much the exact same thing that we did for getting the other one out. Um, what I would recommend is just taking your eight millimeter and giving this just a couple turns, um, just to get it a little loose. And when you do that, then this will allow a little bit more flex, if you can see that right there. So that's gonna give a little bit more flex. What we're gonna do is we're going to drop it in and then pull it this way so it hooks and then snap. All right, and push over. All right, with that locked in, we can kind of get a preview of a little bit of what that looks like right there. But now we're gonna go get our socket with the eight millimeter and tighten it up. And since I have an LCI version, I will be using the bigger of the two clips. You can see that it's wired for both pre-LCI, the smaller one, and then LCI, I will be using the bigger one. You'll see that there's a little notch on the bottom, cut out, two notch cutouts right there. And so I'm just gonna put them together and slide them in. And you'll, you'll feel a nice little click that, they're, that they bit. And that one is done. All right, moving down to the bottom tail light. To get access to that, we have to take off this drip tray and that just easily comes off with a flathead. So we're gonna do that now. With the drip cover removed, you'll see that we have access now to our two 10 millimeter bolts. So we're just gonna take them out. And with those out, we basically are just gonna kinda pull straight out. There's gonna be a rubber grommet in here that's holding that in place. It's gonna take a little bit of force, but we're just gonna pull straight out. Just like that. And then you'll see the one harness here, and that is just going to unplug, like so. And as you can see, there was the rubber grommet that I was talking about that was being held in place by this peg here. All right, so if we want to get the inner brake light to work, we need to route the little cable of the big brake light through this hole. And then we're just gonna kind of follow this cable path and plug it into this uh, top one uh, up here. Uh, in order to do that, you just wanna peel back a little bit of trunk and uh, fish it through the hole here. Just take your time, go careful. So now what you wanna do is wanna make sure that you match up the yellow with the yellow side and the red with the red side. So just make sure that they are in sync with the same side. You don't want to mix match those. And then push together. Get a nice little click. There we go. Yellow, yellow, red, red. And then um, there is a pro tip that some enthusiasts have talked about on the forums where since we're using this small hole as a wire run that we may be in our best interest to uh, snip this off so it's flush. Um, all it, it does, it just, it's not really needed, especially since you have these two uh, for the 10 millimeter. Um, and then you're also gonna have the rubber grommet here. So it seems like if we ditch this, then it'll sit more flush. So I think I'm gonna snip that now. Oh, 
bend that back and forth a couple times. Boom, off. Now we will completely clear the small cable hole. So what's gonna be a little tricky is the balancing act of trying to get this uh, resistor, capacitor, out of the way. I think I'm gonna double adhere adhesive to that down below. And once I get that done, then I'll plug in the harness and then it will just be a matter of plopping this guy into the rubber grommet there and then feeding this through here and then putting on those 10 millimeters again and that should be it for this side. All right, double-sided tape is off. I wanna kinda of get this on the bottom and out of the way as much as I can as possible. And I'm just gonna push and hold there for a couple seconds. I'm going to feed that excess small cable through here. And there are tabs, one says 2013 to 2015. Obviously I have the LCI, so I want the 2016 and up. So I'm gonna take these two harnesses here and clip them in together. Line up with the 10 millimeters. And obviously we wanna make sure that we're ready to go into the rubber grommet. So I'm gonna push into the rubber grommet. And I think we are flush. Let's put those 10 millimeters in. And look at this. It is almost, I'm gonna even say it's a recommendation. I'm gonna almost say it's a requirement to get rid of that clip. There's, there's really no way that would have gone in there with that, that wire, but there you go. You can see that wire is fed through there. There's only that little tiny bit showing. And all we have to do is the wire that we fit up through here. We're gonna take it and nicely uh, zip tie it up through here and uh, do a little wire management here and we'll be done. Um, I've done my zip tying here. I think I used six zip ties. One, two, three, four, five, and six. So this is all very nicely tidied up. Of course, this plastic arm is gonna cover it up along with the panel. One more thing, real quick, pet peeve of mine. Get yourself a nice pair of snips. This is, I know it sounds silly, but this is probably one of my favorite tools that I have, uh, these Lindstrom snips. Um, they are the flushest thing. All these zip ties here, you cannot feel a stub. Don't use, one of my pet peeves is don't use scissors, don't use like pliers or some, you know, you know, thing because you will never get a flush cut. These things get the flushest cut and it just, you can rub your skin on it and you will not get snagged, you will not get cut. I know it sounds silly, hands down one of my favorite tools that I own. I'll leave a link in the description below, but they're a little pricey, but man, um, it's really honestly like one of my favorite, favorite high quality tools. Check it out. And I just need to button this up. I need to take this trim and tuck it back in here. Um, and then I just need to, excuse the airplane, uh, put this in, which is just gonna be these two tabs here, which are gonna go into there. And then of course that bolt is gonna go in there. And then we're gonna be done with this side. And I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the other side. I'm gonna skip through that because I know we wanna to get to the after. Here we go. All right, just finished doing the other side. It's all buttoned up and it's time for the reveal. I guess you can tell from my smirk or my smile that I am pleased with it. I think it plays, check it out. I think it looks super slick. It is definitely more aggressive looking. Uh, I was really, really undecided on the black. And the black line just plays with everything else in my car. The diffuser, spoiler, black M badge, 
the gloss black reflector deletes, but it just, it looks so good. And I love the sequential turn signals. I am super happy with it. Really happy with the way it turned out. So there you go guys, the M4 GTS OLED style taillights on Mineral White F80 M3. It looks so good. Anyway, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for tuning in. MD underscore MK7R, you were right once again. It played, I'm keeping them, I love it. Thank you again for tuning in. If you liked today's video, please give me a thumbs up. If you have any questions about the install video, please leave a comment. And if you haven't done it already, please subscribe. I will catch you guys next time. Out. Hey!